What is going on guys? Wiser here and I am coming to you with One Hive Labs next slate my base. Yes, Katic and I staying on track here. Uh, you know, we did one one week ago. We were super behind on them and we are keeping on tabs here. So uh, here again with the band Katic. How you doing? Hey man, doing great. Uh, ready to rock on this one? Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited. <laughs> All right, so let's hop on over. Um, you know, we had a really busy weekend, let's just say. Um, just finished the uh, heartbreaking loss for Invicta versus 1.0. Um, you know, we absolutely dominated at the Town Hall 9 level, uh, in my opinion. Um, they had to use, I think it was eight or nine bullies. They used eight bullies. Eight bullies. So, you know, I was really proud. I mean, you were up for, you probably for 12 hours straight, we're pumping out bases for people and helping guys tweak. And, um, you know, it was an insane preparation time and it really paid off, I think. It absolutely did. And to me, this has proven that Tunnel 9 defense is not dead. I mm -hmm. mean, one hive, I mean, they're amazing guys. They're great attackers. The, I mean, they will usually they clear the nines with ease and then scout with I don't know how many attacks, but yeah, very many attacks. It's crazy, and to have them use so many bullies and still leave Tunnel Nines open. I mean, to me, that's a testament that Tunnel Nine defense is doable. It, it's very, very, very hard to do, but it can be done. So. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's, it's awesome. good, good to see our, our hard work paying off. You know, yeah, I mean, we had yeah. that war in hand. Unfortunately, you know, our our tens and elevens just did not not match up to those veteran guys like Crispy Crunch and um, you know Duce, all those guys at 1.0 up top there. They really know what they're doing, and it showed. They uh, they definitely bailed their town hall nines out in that one. That's uh, yeah, that's absolutely. I mean, but our guys. I mean, they're so much more experienced over at 1.0. I mean. Amazing job uh, by Invicta. I mean, the pressure was on from the get-go. Um, hats off to the guys at Invicta. They you, they did amazing. You could feel the pressure at the end of that war, and yeah, you absolutely. know, for the for the most part, our guys did absolutely awesome. So, really good job, Invicta. We're really proud of you. Um, just fantastic job from top to bottom. Uh, love you guys. So, um, but. Let's move on. Let's jump into this next episode here. Uh, guys, really getting a lot of good comments on on this series. So we are going to do our best to keep pumping these out for you. Uh, so keep, please, sending me emails. Uh, Wiseroh at Outlook.com. Uh, so I do have base number one up on the board here. Uh, you want to mm -hmm. start off with um, what we decided with this base and why. So this is one of the bases we did want to show because it has a lot of good elements in them. Um, but at the same time, has a couple of big flaws. Um, first of all, um, this is one of those dead zone bases we've been seeing for a while. I mean, with a big open core. Um, I mean, they've been popular for good reason, because people didn't know how to, to deal with them at the start. I mean, it was new, it was fresh. Um, and uh, But over, the ti over time... Um, People have figured out ways to deal with these bases specifically. Uh, for example, uh, the five or six golem attacks, or just uh, a mass of Valkyrie attack. Because opening up one compartment as big as this one, it makes for very easy uh, to predict pathing for Valks or golems, and loses you in a, a compartment, basically. Yeah. So I mean, in this base, that's one thing I wanted to mention, is this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and this is not really eight. It's, it's actually seven uh, compartments in it. So seven compartments is not going to hold up against uh, a mass Valkyrie attack. I, I mean, mean, you don't even need to bring jumps in this case because you just, you just they will the beat walls. on the correct walls. Yeah, but even still, you look at those four jumps, right? You know... <laughs> you know the whole that, base is opened. You know they're going to go in a certain direction, right? And it's just it's too easy to predict. I've I've shown actually in a couple of my recaps now that six golem attack. Uh, I think it's Hinrak uh, who uses them quite a bit. Um, but the the idea is you you, you know where the goal, the pathing is going to go, so you just keep feeding jump spells, and you can feed a couple another golem one at a time in from the outside, and basically just loop around the base and get everything. Yeah. And yeah. add, keep adding wizards on the outside. You do need beefy heroes for this. Yes. But um, then again, it's the match of your heroes uh, to the base. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. Um, I do want to mention, though, 
I mean, this is a good DGB pathing. Uh, most of the springs are very well placed. I mean, this one over here at nine o'clock isn't that good. Yeah. Uh, this one over here at one o'clock isn't that good. Uh, this one is almost good. I mean, if this this kennel was placed one space uh, to, towards nine o'clock, it would be better. Yeah. Um, I mean, the air defenses are out of range. I think this one is kind of close, but I think it still is out of range. It's very close. I think so. It's, it's, she, it's a good job. I think that one space right there might make it targetable. But yeah, it's it's far. tricky. I, I've seen those uh, <laughs> being targeted by a queen, so it should be possible. But, but then again, uh, I wanted to, to show this base because it's a good base overall. It follows most of the principles. But because of the low amount of compartments and the predictability due to the open core, I think it's too easy uh, to triple. And that makes it, uh, yeah. I agree. Basically that. And it, I mean, even we didn't even talk about the Lalo aspect, right? It, it's, it works the same way. You know, you know everything is going to move in it a does. certain rotation, either clockwise or counterclockwise around that huge core, and you just adjust accordingly. Like, it's just it's too easy to predict. So It's very easy to funnel uh, balloons in even. I mean, you could start over here, for example. You just need one balloon, one balloon. That's basically a one-for-one -one trade. And then you can just uh, work your way around. It's not that hard. You, you can just spam haste spells because it's not. Uh, there are not that many defenses targeting at the same time. Yeah. So. Um, okay. Yeah. So it, it's a good base overall. It follows most of the principles. But um, my suggestion would be stay away from dead zones until you're very comfortable with uh, building bases. Yeah, my I said also mentioned this in a recap. If you're gonna be trying to implement in dead zones, start small. Start small with something like yes. just using a, a very small dead zone to create a neutral zone, say for your for your DGB, something like that. Right? Like, for example, or uh, make it an actual neutral zone. So uh, give this a couple of storages. Yeah, I mean, so gold it don't pass there, but Valkyries but it, will. It, Valkyries will go there. Yeah. So and you make uh, the enemy, the attacker, usually is more scared of a Tesla farm around storages than uh, they are uh, in just an open zone because uh, troops will get stalled on the storages. Yeah. So it's just a couple of ideas. Um, they can work. They still can work, but uh, they're very, very tricky to pull off. So be careful with uh, dead zones. Beautiful. All right. Let's, Next base. Uh, number two. Yep. So this guy, uh, this guy wrote quite a lengthy description of where he's at. He sent me a few different changes um, talking about our series. Now, I wanted to say uh, overall, yeah, you know, I, I liked I liked the idea of your base at first. There's a couple glaring yep. issues. Um, however, I, I can tell I can tell you've been watching the series and really been working at it. So definitely. I mean, that's the first thing you see. I mean, there's lo uh, this one has more compartments than the last one. I can. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten. six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's ten actual compartments. So that's a lot better than the the previous one. And um, I mean the springs are uh, good overall. I mean look at this one. The, uh, if hogs are getting sent in from any direction but this angle, they'll uh, trip. Uh, the this one trips over perfectly. The DGP pathing is good. I mean there's storages to protect them even. It does give away where the position is, but that's okay. Yep. It's better to protect them. They're not. I mean, I would move yep. that. I would probably move that X. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Never mind. Just no, the X one's okay. Yeah, it's good. Um, For example, over here, though, I mean, there's a builder's hut there. You could fake a DGB there. I mean, why not? Keep your yep. opponents guessing. Yep. That's one of the, the things that many people struggle with is uh, trying to be unpredictable for the attacker. And even still, just that, I don't know if you had a specific purpose for that builder's hut. I don't know we're talking about a builder's hut, but you have this wide open space where they can just drop right beside your wall. I'm not a fan of that whatsoever. No, me neither. Um, and if you have an extra building like that builder's hut, like use it, right? Push everything out as far as you can. You should have a border around your base. You should never have nothing beside a wall. The reason for that is that um, even when there's point defense protecting your wall, if you drop a wall breaker here, it's almost guaranteed to go off. I mean, yeah. the expo makes it a little bit more tricky, but the cannon doesn't really matter. It doesn't lock on quick enough to take out the wall breaker in time. No, so absolutely. you can just drop your wall breakers and you're in. That's it. Um, so the one big issue I wanted to point out about this base is right over here. I mean, 
I'm not counting the spaces, but it's about it's still about 10 to 15 spaces that's so close together. I mean, one jump or quake as you just drew, like over here, that takes out all four of the giant bombs, and with a quite small of an investment, that will take out this section of the base. So that leaves me to come up with a plan to take out the queen, and once I have her, um, there's nothing stop her, stopping. I mean, there's four spring traps I, I see. I mean, that's pretty good. Over here, over here, and this one is a bit iffy. So I would move that either in between uh, or move it all together. Yeah, for example, over there. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's a, a bit of a big issue. I mean, if someone is a b even a bit proficient with the queen walks, they would uh, likely drop their queen over here. Uh, this is quite an easy funnel, so she'll go down. And um, this cannon will go down before aggroing the enemy queen. So what does that mean? I can drop a spell over here. A poison spell. That's really nice. Because I will not need a rage. If my uh, queen is, uh, has a decent level, like around level 20 and 4 healers, that should be able to keep up with a 1 point defense and an enemy queen. And it's going to be queen, close yeah. call, but um, it should be able to keep up with it and uh, take out your queen pretty much for free. Yeah. So, which, which also kind of leads like to a point about, I mean, I don't know if all the those extra walls there are, are necessary. It, well, they're definitely not necessary with, with having these spaces open on the sides like that. Yes, that's, that's the thing. I can abuse this side so easily that um, these walls are better used to close it off properly than they are right now. Exactly. Um, so, so I mean, that's the first thing you need to fix, and the second thing is uh, the the giant bombs are too close together. And if you fix those two things, I think this base, just like the last one, is a lot better because um, the air defenses are properly placed. I mean, this one is walkable, but that's a tricky thing to do. And overall, I I can see that you're you've been following the bases. I mean, the the series. You know what you're doing. So good job overall. Yeah, absolutely. So, number three. Let's get it pulled up. So, next one. Uh, I like this one, actually. I like it uh, a lot better than the previous two ones. Mm -hmm. um, so, let's start at the start. Uh, the queen. And her chamber. Uh, she's positioned right there at 9 o'clock, obviously. Uh, she has a lot of storages protecting her. In my opinion, that's too many. Try to, to keep it down a bit more. Because right now, when I look at your base, um, it's about this section. Yeah, this section that has no defensive storages. So any troop coming in there will just rush through all of the defenses, not take that much damage. We've yeah. talked about this in the, the previous episode. So I'll keep it short in this one. Um, try not, to Not enough meat on the inside. Exactly. Um, then, these walls, what is their added purpose? I mean, it's just a question. I mean, it, it might seem small, but these are still about seven wall spaces. That's enough to close up uh, a big compartment. So is there <coughs> any added value to having those uh, walls there? I'm not too sure. No, I don't think so. Because you can just I like e the easily break there, right? Drop a yeah, gold. exactly. Yeah. And I like these storages, though. Because, I mean, the defenses, because they will direct and golems away from uh, from the queen, from whatever side you're coming. So those are very well placed. I like it. Uh, makes it very tough to funnel in. So you need a good plan uh, to come in. I mean, this wizard tower over here uh, <coughs> makes it very hard to break in at the correct position together with this one. So that's uh, very nicely done. However, I will say that and that are both fairly easy two for one trades. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a big Now, what I liked was these here, because if I think you would still get it, though, if you drop two balloons I there. I think their range is like this, and the loon does not float on top exactly. So right it will edge. be really close. Plus, um, a mortar any level uh, will just need one drop, and uh, the loon death, I think. 
Yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but I think so. I think so. So you could probably even get away with two defenses for three balloons before you even enter the base and then drop your golems. So So that's that that's rough. Um one possible fix would be to to place this uh cannon next to the wall because there's one two three defenses targeting it and maybe even the queen. Yeah. So that that could help fix it. But overall, good job. I don't think the queen will jump anywhere. Uh, this is a pretty close edge, so why not move that wall just a little bit? Um, but except for that, I think it's pretty good. I mean, this is four spaces. That's very nice. This is five spaces even, so she's very well protected. Yep. So moving on, the amount of compartments, I don't need to count them, I think. Uh, it's nice. Uh, enough compartments gonna make uh, entering hard in this space. I like yep. it. Very hard. It's gonna be very difficult to judge your Valkyrie pathing. Are there valuable quakes though? Uh, yeah, so that's the question. I the mean, first I was, thing I see I was is this at that one. one there. Yeah, that one too. Yeah. But the reason why I'm looking at the three o'clock one is because, uh, from an attacker's perspective, this is a very obvious DGB, which isn't there. So that's pretty good. And this would be an obvious DGB to me. So th this quake would be the first one I wanted to place. Trying to and open might up actually get away with it because this one will still get diffused. This one will get diffused and this one will also get diffused. So even though um, you properly faked it, I mean, I would expect them here and here. I still think I might get away with it because of the, the placement. Yep, I agree. And we talked about this one right here. Um, just not, not a big fan of that one in general. No, because um, if I were to hog this base, and it's likely to hog this side of the base, um, hogs would be mostly coming in from this section, for example, then move through, and you would reinforce at this area. So it's very likely that this building goes down before this one does, before the air defense uh, goes down. So what, what that means is that only these three hogs, or two or three hogs, will trigger this giant bomb. So... To me, that's not too much uh, value, to be honest. Yeah, like I think you, it's better off there. Or, yeah, for example. Yeah. Or why not actually place it here? Only have just one bomb. Yeah, yeah, even still. I mean, the pathing is is pretty good. I mean, this air defense does somewhat screwed for DGB, but uh, still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so spring trap. I mean, the no. Let's stick to the giant bomb. Uh, is there any other? I think that was pretty much it. Position? I'm not, I'm not a huge huge fan. I I really believe you need at least one DGB. I mean, I, I that's not a hundred percent true, but it's I, not a hundred percent true. But for most attackers, I mean, unless you're in a very high level war clan, I think having a DGB is better. Yeah, because um, the high level war clans will always try to to spot these DGB positions and deal with them. And if they're not there and your single bombs are placed correctly, you can really easily trip up a first attacker. So they can be used very well, but um, versus most other clans, just use it. I mean, why not? They're likely going to spam in the hogs anyway. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's about it. And even still, if I, as a general rule, if I know there's four singles in a base, then I will just basically do my best to bring the least amount of stuff to get the queen and the CC troops and then just bring hogs and heels. And hogs and hogs and hogs for days. Yeah. Yeah. So in this space, for example, that would be very possible. I mean, there's uh, one, two, three, four, five point defenses and two splash damage. So yeah. it, you might need a little bit more than just one golem. Yeah. Because it's so still, much. Even the still, value is shattered, huge. shattered Goho with, with four heels, you wouldn't even need a jump. Right. Yeah, it might even be worth uh, to bring a shattered entry. Yeah. Yeah. It might beat in the through somewhere, but that's fine. Yeah. Um. So spring traps. Yep. Uh, let's start at the top here. This one's very nice. Um. This one's nice. This one's well placed. This one. That's a, a classic one-way spring. If people are gonna spam in their hogs, um, bye bye hogs. But other than that. I no don't value. think it's going to do much because uh, I think a good attacker will quake this or jump this area. So I don't think the spring will do anything against a good attacker. 
Um, then we have two at the bottom, the last two. And I think... They're not bad. This one's tricky, though. It, 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 both of those are very... Yeah. Cause not if you come, optimal. Because if you come from this side, you're probably actually going to go From there. this side, it's awesome. From this side, they're pretty good. I mean, this one will still not trigger properly, but this one uh, likely will. But from most angles... Uh, f from this angle, for example, I don't think it will. Yeah, it might do well. I think from this angle is actually the best angle, but any other angle it doesn't seem to do too much. So I would reconsider. <clears throat> you uh, could easily those. make more, like like right here, right? You move move this mortar over just one space, and you create even a great spot for a double spring. Yeah, for example. I mean, there's so many places to to still make room for a, a good spring. Yeah, for sure. So uh, let's move on to air defense. Well placed, I think. I think this base is a very good air defense. Um, yeah. This one is walkable, though, with the two black mines. Yes, so that is. may be an issue. You know, uh, I... So why not move this wall out, for example? But uh, yeah, the placement is good. They cover each other, I think. And entering with a queen charge is really hard on this base. I mean, it might be possible from this angle. But that's going to take a lot of time to take all of this out. So, yeah, I think it's uh, it's good. Yep. Oh. Double uh, black mines for the furthest away air defenses. So that's good. Uh, maybe even... I'd probably, because of the the fact that that 3 o'clock is walkable, I'd probably have maybe like one I, there. I would almost move in here. Yeah. Because, um, first of all, th this... This one is walkable, but let's say it's fixed. Still, someone would come in from this angle or this angle. One of the two. Mm -hmm. So you want to pop the very first hound as quickly as possible, so they need as much tanking afterwards as possible. Plus this mill air defense. If this one base is going to get hit by air, it's likely going to get zap quaked. I yeah, don't see a scenario so where it's not going to be uh, yeah. quaked. Yeah. But I think the fact that we're even talking about that just shows that overall it's a... Good Lalo, good Lalo defense. Yep. Yeah. I mean, uh, the this red bomb is in range of uh, likely lava pathing, though. Yeah, even just double it up right there. And this one is likely to. Uh, it's it that th th these are better to be honest. I think I think they're pretty well placed. So mm -hmm. overall, keep them there. I think it's good. Um, good air defense. Let's stick to that. Yep. Anything else we need to mention? Um, um, we've covered most of the traps. I mean, I see you place some small bombs over there. Uh, that's nice. They're going to function well. They're basically forcing a heal in this area. But you kind of likely need it anyway, which is fine. Yeah, I'm a big fan now of at least taking four, if not all six of my bombs, and putting them inside my base. Um just adding that, adding that. I mean, everyone brings a test wall breaker now, regardless if you have them or not. Um, yeah, that's a trade-off once again. It depends yeah. on the base, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Good call. Um, one thing I was going to mention, I probably would like, like we, like you said, there's a lot of point defense in that queen chamber. I'd at least get rid of that Tesla, and then even consider grounding that expo. Yeah, good point. Because the air defenses are on point, hard to get to, uh, you can ground your expos. Yeah, for sure. That's a good point. I, I quite often, like, I, I mean, that one I think would be a toss-up. It's still a trade-off. Um, but you do have a good Lalo defense overall. So if your CC composition was anti-air, um, I think you get away definitely with, with grounding both. I think so, too. Yep. I mean, the Wizard Towers are out of range, uh, except for maybe this one. This one is on the edge, but should be okay, this one. So I think you can get away with it. It's, it's a close call. But uh, experiment with it. I mean, most attacks nowadays are ground attacks, so mm -hmm. um, try it out. Try new things. One thing I will say is just about the wizard towers. I feel they're too sacrificial on this base. If you look at their, like all of them, maybe not necessarily that one, the last one there, but they're just 
I don't know. To me, to me, they're they're just too too poked out. Uh, I like to protect, try and protect mine a little more. Which a lot of the times now, I'm I'm looking to build at least a, a three a tower a compartment with three wizard towers in it. So I think that's kind of a new thing for Valk defense. Yeah, it could be. Um, yeah, it, once again, I would suggest uh, focusing on uh, keeping the basics clean and then experimenting with uh, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's a it's a a valid thing. Yeah, it does work. And um, overall, though, I mean, this is this is a pretty good anti loon setup, though. Uh, with uh, this yeah, with as well, so maybe maybe point the the sweeper differently. I mean, why not? Yeah, yeah, especially because you got that expo, right? Um, and you even I move, think move that Tesla somewhere like back in here. I don't know. Yeah, something like it. But uh, overall, um, the biggest issue I still have with this base is that there's so many uh, high-value jumps in this base. Yeah. So moving forward, I think that's the thing you need to focus on uh, when base building um, is the jump spacing. Because I don't even need to quake it in this case. No, definitely not. Enter it, enter it three and you, you get a huge, you know huge piece of the base basically yeah i think that's the biggest issue yeah so last base bam that's there good. he is yeah so <clears throat> another very well protected queen once again with the the double layer if you do the double layer um let me clear that yes um what is the purpose of these this set of walls for example if you were to move them out a little bit further, I mean, does that even cost you any walls? I mean, you could even open up this section. That shouldn't. Uh, that should cost you two or three walls, and actually save you two or three more by uh, removing those inner walls, uh, these two walls. So I, th I think you actually save walls by doing it, and you protect your queen better. I mean, right now I can walk in. And take out the enemy heroes uh, with a queen walk without needing to break open any walls or anything. So what I would suggest is if you still do uh, the double layer queen chambers, make sure you just invest those walls. That being said, I'm not a big fan of them anymore. Uh, because I think um, with these walls you can close off two big compartments even. Um, so my suggestion would be just make... The outer set of walls, let me change colors here. Oops. Get these walls out and uh, remove the inner walls and uh, use them somewhere else. Other than that, I think your uh, queen chamber looks, looks pretty good. Uh, still quite a big investment, I'd say. I mean, there's four point defenses and even one in the back. So it's five point uh, defenses once again. So it's a pretty big investment. Uh, for your protecting your queen overall. Just because you know a lot of guys are just going to be coming there with a kill squad anyways. So it, if you know that fact and you know they're going to go get the queen, the CC, I mean, do your best to try and have them stall out after that and not get any more value. Like you're, you're basically on top of that stuff. You're giving them an expo, two cannons, two archer towers, and a whiz tower. Right, I th it's just it's a little too much. There, it's a fine line <laughs> with your queen chambers, but it's really tricky. Yeah. Overall, I think it's good, but I think you need to remove one or two buildings from from your queen chamber, especially since the king is there also. Um. So moving on, um, let's go to uh, the compartments. I think this base is a, a lot, loads of compartments, so that should be fine. Are there any valuable quakes? I think so, up top over here. Let me change that to a circle to show it more clearly. I think that that can be quaked or even jumped. And that opens up a very clear path to another quake or jump towards the queen. Mm -hmm. So once again, um, it does open a lot of the base, so it becomes very tricky to control your troops. But then again, because this is so open down here, I can walk this area and take out your queen. Then just sending a kill squad in here or my queen in there, wh whichever of the two you prefer. Um, and and I don't even need to open bombs. it. I don't yeah. think I need to even open it because from this compartment, I can take out this uh, air defense 
And yeah. by taking both those air defenses, both your DGBs are diffused. Which leaves you open for whatever you Anything. want to do. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, um, for example, a suicide king from this angle, uh, jump him in even, get a queen from up top, uh, bring a rage for her, let her deal with the CC, so that means a poison spell as well, and then just let her sit in here for as long as she needs to be there, and she will take out uh, this whole section for you. And that leaves you with uh, one, two, three spring traps at all, total. Yeah, I don't see any other ones. I mean, you need a go you need a golem for that. Uh, you need a golem swap, for the king, absolutely. But regardless, that's it's one golem, it. four healers, handful of wizards to essentially get a lot of value. Yeah, so I think that's once again a very big issue with the base. Now, if you were to move um, these giant bombs to different positions. Uh, for example, have one double set and uh, two singles, you could force a lot more. Because, uh, for example, a single bomb over here, that would force a heal. Uh, then with uh, the core compartment, uh, that would be another. I mean, depending on how much value the queen and king actually get. Uh, but using these walls, I think, uh, at the queen, I think you can close off so much more of the base to, to make this charge less viable. So once you do that, I, I foresee um, that you can fix this base and uh, have people run out of spells, basically. So force them to make very tough decisions. Yeah, absolutely. So, and it's kind of strange, like a, a, almost like a theme of a few of these bases we've shown out. It's just, it's just the only problem with their DGBs is they're just too close, like to spread them out. I mean, uh, quite yeah. often uh, when I make a base, I'll make one good G DGB spot, and you have two. Like the pathing's good for both of them. Well, that was terror might screw. Well, the, yeah, over... the core is tricky, but I think it's okay. I think it, I think Maybe it can be done. Overall. Sweepers problems, but regardless, you know what I'm saying. Just uh, just split them up, right? And if you have to create two singles to make that happen, that's far more important than having two well path DGBs that are too close Absolutely. To, to each other. And for example, versus most clans, um, they will panic and think that there's a DGB here. But um, the fact that your Arch Tower and Wizard Tower is over there. Um, it kind of spoils it because I can come in with hawks from this angle and even if it's there, just heal this section. I mean, it's fine. And the fact that there's a Tesla there gives me added bonus. Yeah. yeah. And, and even ensures that my hawks will uh, path correctly if it was there. So in my eyes, this is not, this is not a DGB spot at all. Yeah. And if it was there, then I need to heal it anyway, so I don't really care. Yep. Um, um, spring spring traps overall, though, uh, I think all of them are good. I was looking at them. This uh, one is kind of tricky. Yeah, I was wondering. I'm pretty confident everything's going to go Tesla first. But the problem is you're going to get a surgical deployment on both the cannon and that mortar. Yeah, that's the thing. But overall, I think they're well placed. Um, I think I still miss one. In fact, on this one, you think of a surgical deployment from this side, right? You're going here to here, not he not here down to that Tesla. Yeah, likely. Yeah. I think you're you're going to move like this and move like this indeed. So th th I think that spring is kind of wasted, to be honest. And I'm still missing one spring trap. I can find five of them. There's two here, there's two here, and one here. Oh, there's one in the core. There you go. That's yep. a very nice one still. Yeah, I like that one. That one, the, there's no way Hawks are not going to trip that perfectly. Yep. So that's a very nice uh, spring trap. Now, my, and the only problem, and I mean, I always end up having to have at least one or two spring traps that are helping protect. But you look at that double spring trap right in front of the DGB. There's it just may too be much too much value. investments. Yeah. yeah. I agree. <clears throat> um, so, so air, air defenses? defense yep yes um all of them are out of reach i think is this one i don't think if yep. it, that matters too much but i think it's out of range I same story as last one yep. i'm not too sure if anyone will ever try it but um yeah if i chance uh it's out of range i'm not sure it's a close call um they're well placed i mean they're co they cover each other 
Um, this is a fairly easy, easy charge to do though, which gets quite some value. So that may be an issue for someone to abuse. I don't expect people to, uh, to do it still, uh, but it could be an option. Other than that, seems pretty good to me. Uh, the Wizard Towers, this one is in range of an air defense. This one is in range. This one's, I think, just out of range, so that should be okay, and this one is out of range. So that might be a concern. Not too bad, but... It, it could be a concern. I, th I think it could be placed a little bit better. I mean, for example, uh, this position over here, that could be a, a well-placed Wizard Tower. This position over there could be a well-placed Wizard Tower. There are a few options in your base. So try to move them around a little bit more, and um, yeah, that basically. Yeah. Get them on a range. So about air traps, uh, this one protects the the queen. I like that one uh, because the expo is grounded and the king is on that side. So if dragons were to come in, they're likely to come from this angle, funnel this, funnel this, which is made hard by that archer tower, so that's pretty good. Um, so the only real option I see is to drop two uh, dragons, sorry, like this to make him path like this and in and funnel this. Uh, so that's a, a very well placed uh, red bomb in my opinion. I mean sure. black mine. Black sorry. bomb. Yep. I meant the red bomb over there doesn't do much. So. I kind of like I kind of like those two red bombs in the core, but I definitely no. Yeah, I didn't even see that red bomb in the queen chamber. That's that needs to be utilized better. I think so too. The red bombs in the core are nicely placed. I mean, the there's no chance the lava hound will get there. There's one big but, and that is an exploding lava hound will pop those. Yeah, that's true. I think from every angle possible, they will get popped by an exploding lava hound and not exp uh, and only explode one pop by with two red bombs. I mean, in my opinion, it's worth more to have both of those uh, target a lava hound, a full HP lava hound, than it is to kill one pop. Maybe at the twelve o'clock there or something. Yeah, for example, mm -hmm. there's a couple of spaces like over here. Indeed, would be a good one. Uh, oh, this one is pretty well placed, and uh, over here, for example, to, to try and mess with uh, the lava pathing. There's a couple of spaces, just uh, try to figure it out, um, think how would you attack this base, as always, and try to place them out of uh, lava hound pathing, basically. Anything else you see on this base? Um, sweepers, not 100%. Um that's something we kind of missed on the other base, but um, looking at just looking at the ranges, I guess they're not too bad. Then I might... again, if oh. I manage to kill this air defense with a cold blooded entry over here, maybe even no, nah, that wouldn't sh shattered wouldn't work really. It's it's a really tough call, but. Um, they to me it feels like they they both yeah they do po both point the same way so if you can't take that out which is very hard to do it may be very easy to come in like this kind yeah. of clockwise i mean clockwise you might almost be better off putting one of them here and facing something like that that's the idea <coughs> <coughs> So play around with uh, the angles on those. I mean, I know you're using this for your GGB, so it's pretty good. Um, but I'd almost feel so better if it was if it was out that way. Just keeping keeping a. Yeah, or moving like move it like this. Yeah. It would likely still touch this uh, wizard tower. So that would be very nice. All right. Um, so mine's covered. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, the small bombs, uh, I'd say. Um, there's two placed over here. I don't see a lot of reasons for someone to come in at that angle. Unless you want to cold-blooded loon you. That mm -hmm. could make sense, but still, I don't think those areas make sense. I mean, this section makes much more sense to come in. So if you want to place your small bombs out of your walls, I would suggest uh, placing them in these sections. Yep. Or so like we had mentioned before, um, I, I'd almost recommend, you know, once you play around. So here's the thing. If you split one of these DGBs up to fix this problem, you can take four of your small bombs and put them with one of the singles 
wherever you're going to do so and almost kind of create a DGV out of it. I mean, it's not the same, but um, you know, you're adding good value to that single and then you can have another GB somewhere else. You're essentially almost getting an extra bomb out of the deal, GB out of the deal. Yep. So that's uh, one of the ways to, to increase your value on uh, the giant bombs. Absolutely. For sure. All right. Is uh, anything else to add here? I don't think so. I Beautiful. think uh, the compartments once again need some uh, fixing, and the giant bombs. Those are the main things. Yeah, absolutely. So, so um, overall, uh, good job. That's what yeah, I'm saying, guys. We we really see a, in all of these base designs, even the ones we kind of, you know, do a skim over at the beginning. We can tell you guys are watching the videos and really learning a lot, and that's that really keeps us going. We're really pumped. We're seeing a lot of great comments here, so um, just can't express. Uh, how awesome that is because uh, it keeps us keeps us rolling with these videos, doesn't it, Cad? Yeah, it does. Absolutely. I mean, it's awesome. I mean, it, it, even the the first bases we showed today, they're not bad. I mean, no. that's what I want to uh, emphasize. I mean, they're they're good bases. It's just um, versus top tier clans, uh, they will get smashed. But your average um, attacker, I mean, for the average war, I think they're fine. I think that they'll do amazing. Yep. And it's just tweaking from there, right? And just slowly yes, starting to, to get the the entire base building concept together because there's always a million things. And generally, you know, it's, it's, it's the game of, well, you sacrifice one thing to make one thing stronger. And it, it always happens. And it, it takes a really long time and a lot of bases built before you really understand that balance. And even guys that do, yes, it does. Even guys that do understand that balance. Yep. miss it t at times right so it does <laughs> they do absolutely yeah. oh one more thing i see about this base this uh skeleton trap i forgot uh, about those in uh, Ooh, yes. the previous bases um once again try to keep them aw uh, have a specific purpose for them um it's likely that someone is going to poison the enemy heroes or poison the cc so at a likely entry point you don't want to place them you don't want to place them near your heroes uh, because Valkyries or um, a poison spell will hit them. Nope. Uh, place them away and try to here. to mess yeah or mess here. with hawks right. stuff like uh, around those areas. Yeah. So we've covered that in um, the hawk pathing um, of the base building series. So uh, if you want more info on those, uh, I suggest uh, watching those. And there's one last thing in general I wanted to mention. Uh, we've been trying to do this, but I know I've missed a couple. Uh, when sending in your base, please um, open your base in your um, base building. I mean, the, the war base edit mode, like this one is. Uh, because if you do, your name and clan name will not uh, appear on your clan castle. So an attacker will not... Well, it's less likely for someone to recognize your clan name and look up the series and, and be like, ha, I know that base, I know all of the traps, because I've seen it on the base building series and I recognize it. Yeah, generally we try, if you guys don't, we try and blur them out, but it, it'll help us out a lot, guys. Just open it, open your base and screenshot it in the war base edit mode like you see at the top here. Yes, please. Because, um, yeah, it, it's not a big deal. I will try to, to always blur it out, but uh, I know I forgot about it uh, a couple of times. Yeah. So sorry about that, but then again, you sent it to me like that. So <laughs> it's a bit of both. That's right. All right, well, uh, I think we'll wrap this up then. Sound good? Yes. Beautiful. All right, that uh, that does it here for your wisdom from Wiser. Just trying to help you guys bag that next tree star. Till then, we're out.